We're in the finishing stages of our bus conversion. and starting to see big things come together. Oh my God, <laughs> so fancy. But with Mella in surgery for a hysterectomy and a six week recovery, I'm working alone, trying to keep the bus build moving forward, fighting the weather, and trying to get our bus livable. It just feels like this week has been a real struggle. Before winter sets in. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40-foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> so they just called Mella in for pre-op. Then I'm gonna be able to get and go back and hang out with her until uh, she goes into surgery, so. Here it goes. Go to nap. Yeah, hopefully you'll just get to sleep for a couple hours and you'll be all right. Yep. So Bola has been rolled off to the surgery. They've asked me to just hang out here. She was in a pretty good state. She was pretty relaxed. She's been preparing for this mentally for a while. I might have been never more nervous than she was. Oh. So now I'm just gonna try to stay busy. First coffee, and then pack your second coffee. It shouldn't be much longer now before Mella will be finished. So I'm gonna head back in and we'll do some more waiting. Waiting for five hours, I'm starting to get a little nervous in the surgical waiting room, getting ready to talk to the doctor to find out how the surgery went. And hopefully we'll be able to see Mella here pretty shortly. So the surgery took about four hours. It took five hours before I got to talk to the doctor. And uh, I'm a nervous guy, I'm impatient. I paced up and down the halls. I had to go to the car and change my shoes, wore the soles of my shoes out. But now I'm very happy to let you know that Mella's surgery went very smooth. And uh, I'll get to see her in a few minutes. Right, this is very sticky tape. Oh, that's fine. Which is good for the purpose of holding your IV in, but <laughs> not great to take it off. I'm on drugs. It's fine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Live it up. Mella has been cleared to be released. She's pretty out of it. So now we'll just drive up to the front and they should wheel her out in a wheelchair, pick her up. And See if she's up for saying hi to you guys at all. It's probably been a pretty traumatic day. I did it. I'm very groggy. We're gonna get her home to rest for a few days now and uh, let her recover. Good morning. It's still uh, just now getting light out. <laughs> it's very damp, 100% humidity, moisture in the air. Now that we're done with the weather report, Today, I'm going to try to get our inlet boxes hooked up. This will be a way for us to hook up to power, to charge our batteries, or run the electrical house power for our system. I got a 30 amp inlet box with a locking cable and a 50 amp inlet box with locking cable. I also have a little adapter that will go from 30 amp to 15 amp regular like household outlet. This way it'll give us three options for charging our batteries and keeping electric going in the bus. Got this little area that used to have the AC coils in it, air conditioning coils in it. So my plan is to build a little frame to mount the boxes on inside that area and then cut some holes through the grating in the side panel so that when it closes, the outlet boxes are there and I'll always have access to them. All 
All right, I got a rough idea on the measurement for the frame. I think the best thing to do is build a frame, see if I can get fit in, get an idea of exactly how to mount it in right before I go cutting holes in the grate. Okay, I've got the brace in place. I hit it with a coat of rust -Oleum. It's drizzling in 99% humidity, so I don't know how long rust is gonna take to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get everything out of the rain. Go ahead and get my inverter lines cut, wired up, and run over to there. We've decided to treat our inverter separately. A lot of people will take advantage of 50 amp inlets and split off your two 120 volts, meaning you can go to like one to one inverter, like two to another inverter. We're gonna have one 30 amp wired to one inverter and one 50 amp wired to the other inverter. This way we'll always be able to charge our batteries up pretty quickly with whatever's available and continue to run off battery power for the majority of our house voltage. Sometimes it's just so hard to get the camera in a place where you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm drilling some holes uh, through the side of this wall so I can have some nice conduit running through. Conduit's gonna fit. I just gotta snake the wire through, which is way trickier than it seems. Now I've got AC in to my second inverter here. I'm gonna go ahead and run the other wire for AC2, which will be my 50 amp. All right, I didn't film it, but remember how difficult it was to get the conduit through the first one? This one, multiply it by three, add two trips to the house to get Vaseline, and you'll have a little idea of what's going on. Now we're in business. We've got our wires over. Once I got the first box in, I realized that the way it attaches, when the face goes back on, it actually has to go over the back. So I've got these really thick washers. I'm using one as a spacer in the back, just so I have a little place to lip over that edge. So the next thing I need to do is plan out the access holes. I bought one of these access panels on eBay. I believe they use them for race cars. I'm gonna see if I can get it to work on the top one, and then if I can, I'll replicate the same thing on the bottom one. It may rain again today, but uh, I also need to take a break. It's like two o'clock. I need to take a break for some lunch. been a couple days since Mella's surgery. She's pretty wiped out, as you might imagine. She did get up and was able to walk around the garden, but she's pretty much just laying low. It's kind of tough seeing her in such bad shape. The day of the surgery was uh, pretty rough. I don't know how much you believe in connections, but I think we've got a really strong connection. After she was in the surgery for about an hour and a half, I had a small panic attack. And when I say panic attack, uh, I just admit my heart was raising. I shall probably tell you more details, but they basically weren't able to do the surgery the way they had planned and they had to do some alternate methods, a little bit more invasive. Part of me wonders if we are connected to the point that even though she was unconscious in surgery, my body just knew she was going through trauma. I think we all have the capacity to connect with living things. Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of our culture is really pushed away from that. 
Those are things that we're striving to change with this long-term plan and the step of creating a tiny home in our bus so that we could seek out and find a place that'll be ideal for us to live for having our homestead, being more connected to everything in our life. Do you remember me saying how I hate to not finish a project in one day? Well, that's because I dream about it. Last night, all I did is dream about this insert area for our power inlets. I woke up with some plans and blueprints in my head, and now the struggle starts when I try to make it real. I've got some metal that was previously in the bus's bathroom. It's a stainless steel. So now uh, I've got the cover in. It's gonna look pretty nice, I think. However, I used up all the small rivets I had. So unfortunately, I can't put the last piece in, which is what allows you to lock it. So I'm gonna wait till the next one comes in and steal some of the small rivets from that one to make that happen. So to make a little more progress today, I've decided to go ahead and cut out the back piece for the bottom one put the hole in the place, get everything set up so as soon as I get the second cover, I can slap it in, rivet it in, and this project will be finished. Not only do I like how this is gonna look, I think it's great not to have my electric hookups visible or there for anybody to mess around with. So I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. Mella's not feeling great, so I've been stressed and concerned. We're going to go into the doctor tomorrow for a checkup and see how she's doing, and just to get a feel for if she's recovering as expected or if there is any complications. Oh, just a lot of stress. I'm also stressed about our timeline. I don't know how we're going to pull this off in a month and a half to be ready to get out of here. I feel like I need to get super organized, quit doing my things myself and just hire a bunch of people to come help me do stuff. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that won't happen. Maybe we'll be here another winter. I don't know. Well, we've had a couple days of rain and unfortunately, a lot of what I've been working on outside of the bus is electrical, and I can't get back to those. I'm gonna move back to the TV lift cabinet, and because we've got a plan for it now, I've decided that we're gonna have some drawers on the top left and right, and doors on the bottom left and right. I've got my measurements, I got a plan. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build those drawers. Rain is let up for a second, so I'm gonna go out in the bus and see if my drawers 
fit. I'm not gonna say I'm starting to get to it at these drawers, but I'm able to make nice square box drawers, finally. Made faces for the drawers and faces for the doors. Let's see if we get the drawers and doors together for the TV lift now. said hello in a while so I thought I'd come and tell you guys how I'm doing. I'm about I think eight days post-surgery now and I'm doing pretty well. It's kind of wild <laughs> to go and have this major surgery. They take an organ out of your body and it was only like an hour or two before they gave me a piece of paper of instructions and sent me home. I was in a lot of pain for the first two days. The first two days were really rough, and I know in time I will feel better and better, but I am still in the early stages of recovery. I am thankfully mobile now. Obviously, there's still some things I can't do, but it is good to be able to move and be independent because the first couple of days, I was not. I needed a lot of help from Don, and he was an amazing, amazing nurse, and I am so grateful for him. I seem to have picked up a walking partner here. This is Mittens the cat. Hi. I had hoped the surgery would remain non-invasive, and that wasn't the case for me, unfortunately. I did end up needing an incision in my belly to take it all out. It was what needed to happen and I knew it was a possibility and it just means a little more painful and a little longer recovery for me. While I'm doing well and you're seeing me now looking pretty good, I think, <laughs> I don't want to paint the picture that in any way that this was an easy thing to do. I just haven't shown you me at my worst. This has definitely been very challenging, but I think the hottest times are behind me. And this kind of surgery is gonna be different for each woman, the type of surgery you end up having and how your body reacts afterwards. I've still got some issues, but they all seem to be normal. And I am grateful that I can be out and about now. It's really beautiful out here right now lying in the basement for hours on end in pain has definitely gotten me uh, depressed at times. I don't in any way feel like less of a woman because I don't have a uterus. I don't in any way regret getting the surgery, but the lying around is tough. <laughs> I like to be doing things. I like to be using my body. When I can't, it's tough. Be out here right now, enjoying all this beauty. This gorgeous full weather and the colors and the sunset. I feel quite lucky. It's sun shining out today. I can see some storm clouds though. I am going to try my best to get these projects that I've been working on this week completed now. And the first one I think, which may be the easiest one to complete, is getting the access cover for our 30 amp inlet into place. made one mistake it's not quite big enough so I'm gonna have to cut more metal second one didn't go as smooth as the first it's gonna look all right just feels like this week has been a real struggle taking care of Mella being her nurse during the day and night not getting a lot of regular sleep plus I think the whole anxiety of her having her surgery for me the surgery is over but the 
there's no resolution. I'm not getting enough sleep, and that doesn't help a lot. So anybody who is out there in the nursing fields, like my cousin Michelle's a nurse, I have to say, especially during the last couple of years, I really respect what you guys do, and it's a tough time, I imagine. So my heart's with all of the nurses and caretakers out there. I'm gonna take a little break and see if we can't be more successful later on. As you can see, it's another damp and drizzly morning, and I didn't quite get as much accomplished as I wanted to. Yesterday, my dad and I were able to get into the luggage bay. Get some power to come down from our breaker box. So now we got power outlets that will be accessible from these luggage bays. Okay, plug in and reset and <laughs> which is going to be great be able to use them for power tools i'm sure all kinds of uses but overall this week was tough i appreciate you guys hanging out with just me through most of the week i'm trying not to beat myself up about it but i'd love to have enough done on the bus that we could roll out of here before it starts snowing i'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that but I'm gonna try to push so that we can. And I keep thinking I am ready and feeling good enough to get back into the bus build in some form. But this recovery is being like two steps forward and then one step back. Today, my dad and I are gonna try to tackle removing this compressor. Looking for water or dirt or anything coming out. Well, he's got a problem right now. 